Hello, dear foodie friends, and welcome to Kitchen Chat. I'm your host, Margaret McSweeney, and I'm so glad you're joining all of us here in the beautiful Viking and Loch Cornu showroom in the Merchandise Mart, here with my favorite friend and co-host, Chef Jamie Larita. It's always so great to be here with you, Margaret. <laughs> and I am so excited that you are here today. Another dear foodie friend, Chandra Ram, who is so accomplished. You're the editor-in-chief of Plate. Yes. Yes? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, a a multi-cookbook author. In fact, Jamie, she wrote the cookbook, of course, as we know, with Bill Kim. I know we were talking about that a little earlier, yes. but I didn't want to talk too much about it. Yes. Because I was going to ask you about that experience, but go ahead. Yes. And then also, her latest cookbook is about Indian Instapot cooking, and we are going to learn all of the great things about that. Welcome to Kitchen Chat. Thank you so much. Thank you both for having me. You're welcome. Can you pass that book over to me, Yes, Margaret? absolutely. Some wonderful yeah. recipes. And the Instapot, why is this such the craze? Well, I think it's something that just it took off a couple of mm -hmm. years ago. And I think they do most of their sales through Amazon. Right. And there's such a tremendous word of mouth. But it is, it's something that makes people feel comfortable cooking. Hmm. And I've even seen last night, I was looking through the Instant Pot Facebook group. And there was a woman who showed her uh, her kitchen, and she had three Instant Pots lined up. It was just cooking all kinds of different things in them. And wow. I just thought it was amazing. How much does an Instant Pot cost? You know, it depends. There's uh, There are different sizes, the three-quart, the six-quart, the eight-quart, and then there's different models right. with each. But um, especially, you know, especially when there's good sales going on, you can get one for, say, $60. And you were telling me before oh. that you can get, like, gravel hard chickpeas and have hummus in like 45 minutes yes how does that it happen it's amazing and and this was the thing for me that really drew me to it because i live in chicago i live in an apartment i don't want or need excess you know gadgets and things mm -hmm. like that but then friends of mine were telling me like look you throw pork shoulder in there and an hour later you've got pulled pork sandwiches you got you do this you do That's this crazy. it sounds like a magic and then pot it was the chickpea <laughs> thing for me because i love hummus Who i doesn't? love i mean i love beautiful middle eastern mediterranean yeah. cooking and i but i i've always made it out of canned chickpeas because mm -hmm. i i just Who's Never. got the time? I don't have the yeah. time. Who's got the time? I gotta write a magazine. I yes. gotta write books. I gotta, you know, do the laundry. She's got a lot on her plate. And for me, I was like, oh my gosh, you really can do all of these things. And then, then it started to click in with me that this was perfect for Indian food because mm. in India, everybody uses a pressure cooker, but they use the stovetop pressure cooker, right. which is kind of terrifying if you're not used to it. It sure is. It's, it's time bomb. It's a time bomb, and the recipes are crazy because you you sit, you read it and it says, "Okay, well, wait for three whistles, and then do this." And Margaret, like, <laughs> this, this. Margaret, have you ever? Used, no, <laughs> Margaret's <laughs> definitely one to start using an instant. Yes, pot. I can't see you using the stove top. No, no I would cause an explosion. Yeah. I think. Oh, and and for me, so my father was Indian. He was mm. born and raised in a very small town on the coast, southeast coast of India called Vizag. It's in mm. the state of Andhra Pradesh. Mm. But my mother's Irish. My mother, so what a fun my parents met in London. Oh, she's the perfect chef. Yeah. She's a, she loves to eat and drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is we a perfect times. pairing. We have good times. This is a good time right here, kids. <laughs> so my mother didn't grow up with a pressure cooker. And so she, you know, is, was, is a wonderful cook and started cooking all this Indian food. But she was just like, I don't, you know, I didn't grow up with this. I'm not mm -hmm. comfortable with it. So I didn't grow up with one myself. And with this, with the Instant Pot, I mean, you really do, you kind of, Throw the food in there, go out for a run, go run errands, go do, you know, live your life and then come back and nothing has exploded. <laughs> There's no anything on your ceiling right. or any of that. You can take a nap. You can take a nap. I love this. I love so this is ideas. it like a crock pot? I have not seen an instant pot yet. How, how does this work? It looks like... A little, um, I honestly don't think we have a photo of it anywhere. We're going to put one on here. <laughs> um, I mean, it does look like a crock pot. Okay. And, um, but you can, you can, you can slow cook with it. Okay. I mostly use it for pressure cooking. Mm -hmm. So it's taking that six, eight hour braise and turning it oh. into a 20 minute braise. Um, you can use it as a rice cooker. You can Ooh. use it as a yogurt maker. 
Um, wow. you, so you can do, and you can saute in it. So if you're used to cooking with a slow cooker, but mm-hmm. you have to saute everything first. I'm telling you, I, I got to say, Chandra, the, the food, the photography number one in this book makes me want to cook. Well, like I said, that is huge. Galdonis was the photographer for this book, and he is just amazing. Every single one of these dishes in here is, is every recipe from the from the the Instapot. Every single recipe. Every single recipe. So sometimes it's you know how to do like there's a there's a whole section on making raitas, mm-hmm. um, which is the Indian mm-hmm. yogurt sauce, and okay. that's something that's like okay, you take your base of the yogurt that you can make in your Instant Pot, mm-hmm. and then here are the seasonings that you add in. Here's something if you want to add, like, a beet puree to it and turn it into this big, vibrant pink color and that. So, and how do you make yogurt in an Instant Pot? You, use the, you press the yogurt button. And like the, <laughs> I <laughs> love this. <laughs> so for me, I grew up kind of one foot in America, one foot in mm. India, and... My brothers, yeah, I have three brothers, and so my parents would pack all of us up. Are you the youngest? I'm the third of four. Okay. And they would pack us up, and we would go to India every other year. How amazing. Wow. What part of India? Uh, so it's the southeast. We would actually fly. Here's what we would do. We would fly from my hometown in Kentucky to Charlotte, North Carolina. Then we would fly to New York, LaGuardia. Then we would take a shuttle to Kennedy Airport. Then we would wait 12 hours. <laughs> then we would catch a plane to Germany, and then we would go to India. It's exhausting. So I have wow. no idea how they did that yeah, in the seventies. Yeah, right. And with 80s, four kids, four kids, <laughs> and all of that. So we would do that every other year. Mm-hmm. And but it was just this thing of like, you know, being around all the Indian families, you know, in our in our hometown. You know, they were one hundred percent Indian, and we were sort of like half. And so we, mm-hmm. so I always sort of felt like I wanted to be better at Indian cooking, and I wanted it to feel as comfortable as I felt like it should. But I didn't necessarily feel like the connection was as strong. And then when I got the Instant Pot, I was like, okay, I'm going to start making more Indian That's food. amazing. This and you can, you, you, can make, you can make preserved lemons. In is a there bag. a lemon button? Yeah, there should be a lemon button because it is that good. On your new Instant Pot that we're going to create. Yes. On a special one. Yeah, yes. we'll have lemon, preserved lemon button. Not all, all the buttons, all, all the bells, buttons. all the bells and whistles all and buttons. buttons. So, so do you feel like is your forte Indian? You know, I do love those flavors. Yeah, so and do I. And I just there's something to me of the smell when curry leaves yes. hit. Yes, that's so you know, true. Simmering yeah, yeah, yeah. beef. That's just it's just incredible. And and so it and it's a very you know it's a very personal thing for me that mm. so much of this like reminds me of being a kid and those trips mm-hmm. to India right. and you know I love that I was able to recreate the lime pickle that my father used to eat all the time when in I was the book it. it's in the book a lime and, pickle right so it's spicy and it's tangy and all of those things but. When I was a kid, I was always terrified of it because it was like, oh, God, there's chilies in this. This is going to be too hot, too hot. The South Indian family is like the food is extra. It's like the South anywhere. The food is spicier, right. Right? right? But now I'm like, oh, I've got some leftover rice. I've got something. Huh. Just chop it up, throw it in there. And Is she I making you hungry? I am so I'm hungry and these recipes look great, too. too. Yeah, no, I want Indian <laughs> food. Like, I'm like, I'm going to make Indian food. I'm like, it's not going to be nearly as good. But I had um, big – have you ever been to Vancouver? I have heard the Indian food there is incredible. I've it's never incredible. been. It's incredible. Yeah. So I, I toured with Sarah McLaughlin, and her um, her ex husband is ha- is Indian. Mm-hmm. And there's a restaurant called Vidges in, in oh, Vancouver. Oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And some of the recipes from my book, um, plenty, were inspired by that restaurant. Um, but I basically learned how to, well, try to learn how to cook Indian food because of that relationship that mm-hmm. I had and that's when I fell in love with all of the different spices mm-hmm. and the curries and just the flavor just the smell of Indian food oh that's um, so good yeah no it's uh, it's one of my favorite cuisines so I'm looking at the photographs mm-hmm. in here and if the recipes are as good as the photographs I'm in now I just have to get an Instapot and make it all less time right. and you just press the button this this is what I'm liking See, about yeah. it do you really you just I mean and there, it's it's you know you do have to like you have to wait the, as the machine heats yes. up it, it creates pressure in there and that's how it winds up cooking things faster but Chandra you, you do, you re- do you realize that Margaret McSweeney sitting over here <laughs> thinks that this is some kind of magic 
pot <laughs> that you're talking about, that we're talking about, okay. that she's going to just <laughs> press <laughs> buttons <laughs> and Indian food just going to come out of it. Indian food, okay. Right, so a little work. Just one or two. <laughs> okay. Steps, but <laughs> just one or two. Just but you make it easy in yeah. this, so. You know, I try to, uh, part, of, uh, part of why I wanted to do this book was to really, you know, tag on to the fact that so many people feel like cooking has been demystified mm -hmm. with the Instant Pot. So why not make Indian food that way? You know, because so much of it is dependent upon pressure cooking anyways. Yes. But also, it, it's there are so many people who are really interested right. in mm -hmm. Indian food, and they feel like it's easier because they have the Instant Pot. Right. So, yes. so you got you got me here. So basically, okay. what you're... No, I'm in. I'm in. I'm, <laughs> all, I'm all in. We're sold. So um, tell us about... So I was I was thinking about you as a little girl. Okay. And tell me, like, with the combination of your parents, um, what was your first food inspiration? Like, what was the mm -hmm. first thing that you made that made you feel like you wanted to be in this business? You know, my, do you have that taste memory? It, it, I do, and it's not necessarily Indian food because okay. I actually didn't really like Indian food when I was growing up. Ah, see, this is the truth. Yeah. This is like the real life story part of this. Gold. Um, I just got the golden nugget. Because my red haired, blue eyed, ivory skinned Irish mother has the spicy Sounds palate. like a song. It, it's like a country wow. song. It's country song. She has the spiciest palate of anyone I've ever known. Really? Amazing. And so she made Indian food so spicy that to me it was just like Unpowered. this ball. Yeah. Right? And like I said, we'd go to India and my, you know, my aunts would like, they would spoon yogurt and raita on everything. They would put sugar on it. They would do whatever they could to get me to eat it. And so it, I really was, like, I kind of understand when people say, oh, I'm a little afraid of this chilies yeah. and the yeah, spices yeah, yeah. because I used to feel that way. But my mother is an amazing cook. Mm -hmm. And so we used to, um, we used to go all out on desserts and things like that. And she was also just, you know, I remember it was like the late seventies and we lived in a small town in Kentucky and she said, okay, well, I bought a walk. And we're having a dinner party tomorrow night, so let's learn how to use this wok. And so we would cook those things together. We would just make all kinds of little, you know, cookies and pastries and, you know, European desserts and things like that. And Amazing. we never, it was funny being, you know, visiting my mom last week. I was thinking about the fact that when I was growing up, the most exotic meal was a soup and sandwich because we never bought that. <laughs> She was always wow. like, oh, no, I have a Spanish ham dish. And we're like, okay. Wow. Do you so. So, <laughs> so do you feel, because I'd love to, to know more about your culinary journey and, and how you got to plate and becoming a cookbook author. So it kind of sounds like it began in your childhood kitchen. Definitely. And then definitely. could you take us on that journey after and how you ended up in Chicago and in the culinary field? Yeah, I... You know, there were two things that I really, well, I guess three things. I loved, I loved books, mm -hmm. I loved magazines, and I loved cooking. And I never really saw exactly how all of that came together. And so my career path kind of sounds like it's a, it was like a little bit more planned than it was. <laughs> I mean, a certain amount of it is just you work hard and you get sure. lucky because you worked hard, right? Sure, yeah. But it's, uh, so I was always very interested in that, and I studied journalism in college. Mm -hmm. And um, went to school. I moved to Chicago to go to school here at Loyola. And, but I started working in restaurants. And I just loved working in restaurants. I worked at Carlucci, the, uh, it, the restaurant on Halstead Street. Yeah. Yes. And I still have close friends from when I worked there. And we, just, we were working this incredibly busy restaurant every night. And we would make little deals like, okay, I got to see Harrison Ford last week, so you get Paul Newman this week. <laughs> right. and, Oprah Winfrey's back in her, you know, waiting in her car and wow. all of this. But we would just like, I just loved the excitement of right. that. And I loved all the energy that yeah, you see that's in the restaurants. Word. Yep. And, uh, and so I was studying journalism mm -hmm. and doing that. And then I was like, I really want to get into the kitchen side. I really want to cook and do more of that. And so after finishing uh, my degree at, at Loyola and studying journalism, mm -hmm. I went to culinary school. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the CIA, Culinary Institute of America. You did too. <laughs> in Hyde Park. Got it. And so, you know, and we went back in the day when it was all very old school French cooking and you learned your mother's sauces. Absolutely. And you learned the most traditional preparations. Yes. And 
you took a quick spin through, you know, one day, okay, today we're going to learn South American cooking for one day, and that's it. And then now you went to Augie's. Yeah. <laughs> Now he's talking about the bars that we went to. We're going to talk about. Well, that's important too, right? But then we went to Dutch Cabin. That's right. <laughs> we did. We did a lot of that. Right, right. It was very stressful. It you, was, need, you needed to like de-stress. The culinary can wow. make you have a cocktail. Or five. Or six. Oh, yes. No. So, so no, it's, it didn't sound very stress-free in the kitchen. But. No, I think it just sort of never is, right? Because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. You don't, yeah. you know, you, you have to focus. It's a pressure cooker. Uh, uh-huh. Not an Instapot. Uh-huh. I had to bring it back to Instapot. <laughs> yeah, I had to do that. I it so I wound up moving back to Chicago mm-hmm. after culinary school, and I worked as a consultant chef for a bit, and then... I did restaurant marketing and PR. And you worked at some great restaurants. Yes. So you worked at Blackbird? Blackbird. I did my internship at Blackbird, right. and it was right after the restaurant opened. Wow. Oh. And um, it was before it had even been reviewed. Wow. So no one wow. really knew what this was. Yeah, but that's a good point. It's a Donnie Medea. The deal chef yes. in the city and then in the country was coming in. Yeah, but think about yeah. the energy at that point. Oh my gosh. I know. Yeah. When it was right. just, okay, we're doing all of this and we're struggling and you were part of the growth. We're yeah. trying to, I and mean, it was just, it was six months at the beginning. I don't like to overstate it or anything, but it was really fantastic. And, mm. you know, all of the partners were working together. And, you know, one of the partners, Ricky, uh, his, his mother would come in and roll uh, chocolate truffles with me in the basement. Oh. We were getting ready for pastry service. Really? And, uh, yeah. That's amazing. And she'd bring us egg salad sandwiches. I and had an egg salad like sandwich today. It was like homey thing. <laughs> Margaret brings the egg salad sandwiches. And then, you know, and then, and then I left and it became the biggest restaurant in the city. Yeah. That's all you needed to do. See, well, <laughs> buy the book. <laughs> yeah. You too will become you a too. very famous restaurant yeah. if yeah. you cook if in you, an Instapot. If you do this. And fo- right. follow your recipes. I, Tell us about, go ahead, Margaret. Yes, I, I'd love to hear about plates. Yeah, that's by what way I was going to say. background, yes. you know, we, we met through I IACP. Met. Yes. Margaret and I met through IACP <laughs> and then she was so gracious because we were both flying to the conference in Louisville a couple of years ago and we were on like a 6.30 a.m flight together and she comes in Pretty onto good. the plane looking perfect yeah, as she always does and I rolled in exactly the way I look at 6 30 in the morning whether I'm in an airport <laughs> or at home or whatever I think Margaret saying. goes to sleep like this I think she does <laughs> yeah, I was I clutching so. a coffee like it was my job <laughs> and she was like oh my gosh because we had met before and so we had the best time just kind of chatting fun. and everything like that yes. so yeah so I was um I started doing some freelance food writing mm-hmm. and um Nancy Ross Ryan was the founding food editor at Plate, and she called me and said, hey, we're starting this magazine, and I need someone who's an expert on fish sauce, and I heard you are, and I said, absolutely I am, let's talk tomorrow and do this interview, and then I frantically did all kinds of research on fish sauce, because <laughs> I wasn't an as, expert, but as, I was like, I see I. an opportunity when, when it's in front exactly. of me. Exactly. Of course, I love, I love fish sauce. I was just cooking with it. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then she asked me to develop a recipe for the first issue, and then after that said, can you write for us? Mm-hmm. You have a journalism background and a culinary background, and can you write? And so I wrote for the magazine for a few years, and then one day the editorial director, Bill McDowell, called me and said, can we have lunch? And I was like, oh God, what's happening? And then he said, hey, Nancy's going to retire, and we think you should be the editor. And I was like, wow. okay, oh. done. So God's trains run on time. Yeah, this will be 15 years. <laughs> wow, that yeah. that's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's a long so, time. But it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, of so course we, it is. That's we, why you're still here. I mean, we love doing the publication, and we what we do is pick a separate theme for mm-hmm. each issue. And so we had uh, an issue all about Peru mm. and Peruvian food and drinks, and you know what to do with pisco. And wow, that sounds pair. amazing. And then now we've got an issue about pairing wine and food and. Mm. You know, so it's like you get to do this deep dive into a different cuisine or a style of cooking with each issue. So and you're traveling constantly to all these great destinations. destinations. I just kind of want this job. <laughs> I can't write. Okay, well, can't you write. can you can sit in my meetings and then yeah. tell me if you spoke it. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. It's happening. Okay. Job switch. Job switch. <laughs> well, okay. Well, would you like to work in the Viking show on here? In the Viking Lock and Show? What do you think of our show? I think it's pretty fantastic. Okay. I have serious... Uh, I have serious kitchen envy every time I come in here. Do you? My Appliance husband doesn't, doesn't necessarily love it when a, I'm like, a lot, hey. a lot of husbands <laughs> don't like when... When we visit. When we visit because they wind up 
buying new appliances. But that's a good thing. Yeah, it has. That's a good thing. It's been a great thing. It is. So, plate 13 years, mm -hmm. the new cookbook. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the cookbook? Are you going on a cookbook tour? You know, what I'm doing is um, just what's great is, you know, as Margaret said, I already travel a lot. So, yeah. I'll sort of say, like, oh, if I have to be in San Francisco on Monday, I'm going to fly in on Sunday and do an event or right. something like that. So. Right. So, yeah. So, you're, you're, you're taking advantage of the travel. Taking advantage mm -hmm. of the travel, doing some things in Chicago, which is a fantastic market to be in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just trying to keep up with so much of it is social media. So, mm. you know, that's a really big part of it. It is. Now, so, have people been posting their recipes from your book on they Instagram? Have, which I love. Yeah. I absolutely love. Do you it. get a lot of people talking about, like, do you get all the questions? I get the questions. Right. So I get the questions. My because, Instapot's not. <laughs> right. Well, so many people, it's great. So many people got an Instapot for Christmas or Hanukkah or just at the end of the year, mm -hmm. Black Friday sales. And then usually people get an instant pot and it takes them about a month to stare at it before they'll <laughs> decide to cook it, cook with it. And then so very fortunately, happily for me, a lot of people got my book as well. With the instant pot. With the instant pot, you know, right. if they got it as a gift or something like that. And then they were like, okay, so wait, so what do I do? So I do get those questions of... Just how do I do this? I'm pushing the yogurt button. <laughs> right. And no Magically, yogurt's not coming out. I keep looking and <laughs> so a lot of people must you must get all the emails with, you know, I can't have this, but I'd like to try that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And one thing I thought was fantastic was uh, my editor, Meredith Dees, really said, like, let's make sure that we indicate which recipes are gluten free, are dairy free, are vegetarian, vegan. So people knew so that it was easy for people to understand. Yeah. We know Meredith. And Meredith. I love Meredith. She's, she's yes. Fantastic. Yes. So oh, you've met wonderful. her. Yes. So a shout out to Meredith. She shout is so Meredith. wonderful. <laughs> <Meredith>. <laughs> and also the Les Dames. We need to acknowledge Les Dames, oh Escoffier, and yes. say yes. Margaret and I are members of Les Dames Escoffier. I remember we did that wonderful group photo of all of us uh, <laughs> What was that during? Was when, during Barbara was when Barbara yes. was here, yes. Yeah. And Carla Hall came. Is that where you whacked the champagne, Margaret? No, I, I savored the you champagne. Savored? Yeah. I did. at the job. Yeah. With the broken shoulder. So your mom, oh, yes. Oh so, <laughs> you can do yeah, things. So Be careful with that These two throw some serious parties. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> and I think we're going to have one of the parties... I would love yes. I would love for you to come into the showroom and cook with us. Oh, I would love that. That would be really fun. And we could do a Facebook Live. Yeah, we could. Could we do that? Sure. Oh, how fun. Yeah, we should. Yes. I'll yes. let her do all the cooking. Oh, okay. that will be great. Maybe we'll the taster. We'll, we'll I'll clean. push the buttons. You'll push the buttons. <laughs> That'll be good. Well, Chandra, I've always liked to end Kitchen Chat with three tips for the home chef. Okay. So what would you recommend? Uh, with the Instapot or just without? Let me see. I think the first one is to feel free to, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. So really, mm, that's a good one. you know, to, to try and experiment with something new, whether it's a new spice or, uh, you know, a dish a you've always or, thought about. Yeah. yeah I like yeah. that. That's a good tip because so many times people are creatures of habit. I always, I love being in the supermarket and look what's inside people's looking. I'm a, I'm a, a shopping cart voyeur. Cut voyeur. <laughs> I am. And I'll look and I'll see you know, what's in their shopping cart. That's actually a TV show, I think, a concept. And I'll wonder if they buy the same things all the time because they right. just know, like, I, I, you, they're like creatures of habit, right? What if you just threw something wild into your shopping cart, like a dragon fruit? So, right. Yeah. You know? Right. Like, what if this would be? Here's the show. What you is it? follow them, okay. and oh then gosh. you sneak the dragon fruit into the cart. Right. And then they have to cook something with it. Ooh, I like that. Yes. That's my show. Okay. That's our show. Okay, our that's show. Our show. Yep, we got it. Oh it's will. called. It's called something. It's like a ingredient. stalker. But then <laughs> Margaret and I will be there to taste what they eat with, yes. they eat with the dragon fruit. Guys, I'm not kidding. I think this is a I great show. I think it's show. a good show. I think it's I a really good like, okay. This is good work. Because what I love doing when I travel, I love going to grocery stores and seeing what's available. Right. Mm. And so we were talking before about um, Bill Kim's cookbook, yes, Barbecue. Yes. What a great and, book. Which, 
You did such a great job on you that. Did. Well, I mean, that's Bill's book and working in tandem with him, and he's just the most amazing human being and chef. He is. But what I loved was going home to visit my mother in Kentucky and going to the Kroger and seeing all the ingredients were available. Wow. So that's what I like doing. I like mm. seeing what's what's in. So, I think there's another idea brewing here. Okay. Where you, okay. where, where you can take a chef's cookbook and go into those markets right and then Ooh. challenge the person like here's a here's bill kim's cookbook here are all the ingredients make the recipe or challenge bill kim to do it because mm. he can sort of look at it and say you know i've i've seen him i've cooked with him mm. where um he's like wait i need salt for this and instead of using just salt he used soy sauce right he's like that's oh. my salt and it has all these other flavors right so i think my second tip is watch what chefs do and do what they do. I love the way you just segued right into the second <laughs> tip. That was smooth. That was so smooth. <laughs> well, we're going to launch all these TV shows. Yeah, for yes, sure. Yes, I mean, yes. Yeah, you have to have that. <laughs> but I, I think that it's so, it's so interesting to really read a cookbook yeah. and read mm-hmm. the introduction. Mm-hmm. Because that's where they start telling you all the little things that they like to do. I, yeah. I think especially these days. When, you know, cookbooks of the past, you can kind of maybe get away with more. Mm -hmm. You know, these Mm -hmm. days, I think cookbooks, um, I think there are a lot more people using cookbooks these Mm -hmm. days than ever before. Do you agree with that? I do. Cookbook Mm. sales are up 20, we're up 25% last year. Wow. Fantastic. So So I'm right. Yes. You're right. Which you always enjoy hearing. Yes, because I'm always wrong. <laughs> and I think the cookbook readers are really trying to expand their palate mm-hmm. and well, their techniques, I think the, the, and this is the, great. Between the Food Network and Plate and, mm-hmm. and all these other um, Instagram, you know, a lot of people are being inspired by photographs mm-hmm. and by Instagram and by other chefs and all of these. You know, no longer do we have, like, just a few chefs out there that, right. like, remember back in the day when, like, when it was, like, Rachel Ray and, you know, Bobby Flay and just like... It was sort of five chefs. Yeah, right. Right. In the group. Now there's hundreds of chefs out there and hundreds of recipes floating around. They have to be right and they have to be good in order for them to gain energy and frequency. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to be a food star today, I think you really got to have some serious game. I absolutely agree. I think you have to. And you have to back it up. Like you say, your Mm -hmm. recipes have to work. Yeah, they have to work. Because online, if your recipe sucks, guess what? Sorry, I said sucks. I'm just that. I can do that. (laughs) On the salty side. I mean, right right away on on social media, like, hey, I'm on, you know, I'm on page whatever, and your lamb meatballs aren't really that great. They'll be perfect. I know. I I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You always go for the meatball recipe. (laughs) But it's, but you're right. I mean, you have to, you have to back it up. That's why with this book, um, with Bill's book, I just have regular people test recipes Mm -hmm. after I tested them and made sure just have somebody else do it and say, well, wait a minute, what about this? And And did you follow them in the grocery cart in the grocery store? I should have, I should have, I should have sent, I should have sent this one over to my room and be like, I'm sorry. Um, so we, we. We watched you in the grocery store, apparently. We're just, really embarrassed. You only bought one lemon. Yeah. The rest we called for two. I think we all know that. How about you pay attention next time? So, <laughs> tip number three. three. Tip number three. I, um, I'm going to just beg everybody. Everybody, please sharpen your knives. Oh, God. Yeah, God. I sharpen. You know what? Me included. <gasps> I know. Too. Nope. I'm, I'm guilt. I love a sharp knife. Don't okay. get me wrong. I love a sharp knife, but yeah, I sharpen my knives. I have the sharpest knives in the world. And do you get them sharpened or do you sharpen them yourself? I get them sharpened. Okay. Because I feel like I never got quite the, as good of an edge yeah. mm. uh, using this, using, well, the steel isn't necessarily a sharpener. It just sort of tunes the edge of it. Yeah. And I had a stone, but I felt, I always felt like, all right, I need to still go right. in. And, I'm so with you. Yeah. Yeah. And because the stone, you're like, you're like working the stone and then you right, get into it. Like and then feeling good about it. And, and then, then you like <laughs> cut something and it's like, wait a minute. I just spent all the time. Right. Yeah. You got to leave it to the professionals. I'm mm-hmm. with you. So, yeah. So I like to take it to, uh, you know, to a knife shop or Sola Top will do it. You know what I have in my neighborhood in Bucktown? I have someone that drives around in a truck. <gasps> I have that. I live in Lincoln really? Square, and at our farmer's market on Tuesdays, there's somebody there who will sharpen your knives for you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like but well, it really, I'm... it makes such a difference. And I always think, um, especially like as after we get through winter, you have to do it because you just spent the entire winter cutting 
butternut squash and mm. carrots yeah, exactly. and all of these thick, hard, hard vegetables. Yeah. People come over so, my house, and that's the other thing. When you have sharp knives and people aren't used to cooking, they come over to a chef's house and they use your knife. They're like, oh, my God, your knives are so <laughs> sharp. Yeah, it's like, I can't believe I just cut them. It's like... Well, I'm embarrassed to say I have not sharpened my knives, and I'm about to celebrate my 28th wedding anniversary. <laughs> so, Margaret, what are you doing? You're like cutting with spoons. You I know. <laughs> so, this is the reason. The next cookbook, Cutting with Spoons. By cutting Margaret with Spoons. Right. By Margaret I feel like that's a book of poetry, actually. Right? Yeah, yeah that could be. It's so deep. Okay. It's so deep. Well, these are recipes. Cool. Yes. So, great tips. And if you could hold up that beautiful cookbook. So, foodie friends, we will have a link to this. Thank you so much, Chandra. For it actually is a beautiful book, chat. and I can't wait to try some of these recipes. I don't say that often. No. I, I Have I ever said no. that in Kitchen Chat? No. So this I like is... Bill's book. Bill's book was very good. But to me, when you have great food photography, number one, and I love that it's just um, every dish you want to make. Yes. Every, every, time, every time I see a photo... I love the caramelization. What a great job on the, on the photographs in this book. Yes. So I'm and excited. I did wonderful, have wonderful team. one mm-hmm. other question. What is a lassi, lassi? Lassi is a yogurt drink. Okay. And so it's something that you can have. Um, I think people are most familiar with mango lassis, mm-hmm. and um, which I always make with canned uh, Alfonso mango puree. Alfonso oh. mangoes are a type of mango that you can find in India and almost nowhere in the U.S. Wow. And they're just sweet and incredible. And they're so sweet that I don't think you need any, you need, mm-hmm. you can just mix them with plain yogurt. I add a little lime juice and a little rose Ooh, water. Oh, I like your chai oh. lassi. And yeah, so lassis are just a wonderful um, yogurt drink. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, and this one, actually, this is a salt lime lassi. Interesting. Ooh, and like see, uh, people, I think in the U.S. aren't as familiar with, but you might see it on an Indian uh menu every now and again but Mm. yogurt drinks are a great way to they're cooling they settle your stomach after you've had all this like spices and everything so Mm -hmm. that's india's trick i love that i love it wow well thank you again chandra for for being on kitchen chat and thank you jamie and thank (laughs) you dear foodie friends for joining us on this culinary journey please come visit jamie larita in the viking and lochran showroom in the merchandise mart here in chicago suite 137 check out chandra's new cookbook i'll make sure we have a link to that come visit me in my kitchen kitchenchat.info Check out thevikinglife.com for more inspiration and recipes for your kitchen. And always remember to take a moment and savor the day.